the span of four days, 11 people lost their lives in the latest high-profile mass shootings to grip the U.S. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been 614 mass shootings so far this year. The archive defines a mass shooting as a shooting where four or more people were shot and injured or killed, but excludes the shooter who may have also been injured or killed. It's now been more than a week since five people were shot and killed at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. Officials say the suspect used an AR-15 style rifle in the attack. Then, days later, Chesapeake, Virginia became the site of another high-profile mass shooting. A Walmart manager shot and killed six of his co-workers before turning the gun on himself. President Biden is making the case once again for an assault weapons ban in the wake of those devastating mass shootings. The president speaking off the cuff during a surprise visit to a Massachusetts fire station on Thanksgiving. He was passionate as he argued for tighter gun control in this country, accusing gun manufacturers of putting profits over lives. The idea we still allow semi-automatic weapons to be purchased is sick. It's just sick. It has no, no social redeeming value. Zero. None. Not a single solitary rationale for it except profit for the gun manufacturer. Can you do anything about gun laws during the lame duck, sir? I'm going to try. What will you try and do? I'm going to try to get rid of a small one. During the lame duck? I'm going to do it whenever I, I got to make that assessment as I get in and start counting the votes. <laughs> And some Democrats aren't optimistic they have the votes needed to advance the assault weapons ban bill before the new Congress is ushered in in January. I'm glad that President Biden is going to be pushing us to take a vote on an assault weapons ban. The House has already passed it. It's sitting in front of the Senate. Does it have 60 votes in the Senate right now? Probably not. Well, White House correspondent Kellen Howell is live in the nation's capital for us with more on the president's push to pass new gun legislation. Good evening, Kellen. Good evening, Lindsay. Well, President Biden has said that he wants to get rid of assault weapons and is pushing Congress to do so as quickly as possible. But Democratic lawmakers this weekend are being pretty blunt that it's just not looking likely in this session of Congress. And now some of them are workshopping possible other solutions that they may be able to get done to help prevent further mass shootings. One of the Senate's loudest voices in favor of stricter gun control laws said Sunday that Democrats do not have enough votes to pass an assault weapons ban, but said they might be able to get something done on guns next year if they can keep Georgia's Senate seat blue. Does it have 60 votes in the Senate right now? Probably not. Um, but um, let's see if we can try to um, get that number as close to 60 as possible. If we don't have the votes, then we'll talk to Senator Schumer and maybe come back next year with maybe an additional senator and see if we can do better. Last week, President Biden again said he was going to try to get rid of assault weapons following the shooting at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. The idea we still allow semi-automatic weapons to be purchased is sick. It's just sick. It has no, no social redeeming value. Zero. None. Not a single solitary rationale for it except profit for the gun manufacturer. Over half of voters say they want to see nationwide gun policy made stricter, according to an Associated Press survey. About 30 percent said they want gun policy kept as it is. This summer, the House passed a ban on the sale, import, manufacture, transfer, or possession of many types of semi-automatic guns and large capacity ammunition feeding devices. But the bill hasn't been taken up in the Senate. But Colorado's Governor Jared Polis on Sunday declined to support President Biden's call for a nationwide ban on assault weapons, saying lawmakers should look at the issue from all sides. I, I think what you really need to do if you're serious about reducing these kinds of gun violence events and mass violence events is try to take the best ideas from, from all sides at work. Polis said he will take a hard look at why Colorado's red flag laws did not stop the shooting at Club Q and said the law may need to be expanded. We're certainly going to take a hard look at, at why red flag law wasn't used in this case, in the case of the King Supers shooter, what can be used to better publicize, make available, uh, add different parties to make sure that it's used when it should be used. Police reports show the suspect was known to law enforcement previously. They responded to a bomb threat in June of 2021 reported by the suspect's mother. 
but neither law enforcement nor any family triggered the state's red flag law, which allows family or police to ask a judge to temporarily confiscate a person's guns if they're deemed a threat to themselves or others. Polis says the state needs to do a better job of publicizing the law. Uh, we also need to make sure that we uh, publicize the law and make sure that the tools are in people's hands when they need it to remove dangerous weapons that could be used for self-harm or harming others from somebody who's in a mental health crisis. And Murphy suggested lawmakers should withhold funding for local law enforcement in counties where red flag laws are not being enforced. That is a growing problem in this country. And I think we're going to have to have a conversation about that in the United States Senate. Do we want to continue to supply funding to law enforcement in counties that refuse to implement state and federal gun laws? Police said the suspect in the shooting at Club Q in Colorado Springs used two weapons, an AR-style rifle and a handgun. But shooters, uh, but, but suspects in shootings in uh, Virginia, uh, Chesapeake, Virginia at a Walmart, Lindsay, as well as that shooting at the University of Virginia this month, both used handguns. Back to you. All right, Newsies, Kellen Howell, live in the nation's capital. Thank you, Kellen.